I've had success getting my other system up and connected to Zoom. So with that, welcome to Herding Cats 103. Tonight is a peer help session. Open mic, ask the questions. Hopefully somebody has the answers. Uh, just a preview of what's coming up. Uh, Rodney's going to be doing another PowerPoint presentation, largely for beginners. Um, in three weeks, we're going to miss two weeks. I'm unavailable next week, and uh, it was brought to my attention the U.S. election is the following week and may not be a good night. Uh, so Rodney will be back with a, a PowerPoint. After that, we're going to kind of have two branches. We're going to continue with a beginner's type of track with uh, two additional PowerPoints by Rodney intermixed with labs where we'll actually – not be in PowerPoint, we'll be working live with, with cats, building a layout, making you know turnouts, doing signaling and all that stuff on, on a live system. Um, then Rodney off, also offered to do some advanced stuff that would be interactive, uh, getting into defining signal heads and another one on customizing your startup environment and come around December 1st-ish, He's going to do one that goes over the new features in, in the new production release of JMRI, which is coming out in December. And along with that, there'll be a new version of CATS released. Um, Seth Newman has also uh, agreed to do his presentation. There he is on uh, communications for model railroads. Uh, he's got an excellent PowerPoint I happen to find on my own out there talks all about setting up telephone systems and stuff like that. It's not directly cats, but the people that like dispatching and cats probably like the communications aspect. So I've asked him to do that and he's agreed. So we'll get that scheduled. And then Dave's going to do one on uh, integrating cats with JMRI operations. So we do have a lot of stuff coming. If you're on the, uh, the group's IO page, there's a down the left side, there's a wiki. And I've listed all the programs we have planned, and there's like at least another dozen that are on the schedule. Uh, you, you just don't see them on the calendar yet, but they're, they're coming. So with that, I'll open up the forum. Anybody wants to, anybody that has an issue can bring it up, and I may answer it, or one of your peers will answer. So let's just op open mic it. Go ahead, speak up. Okay, I got a quick question here. Anybody in this group uses uh, that train stat uh, portion of CATS? Uh, raise your hand, please. Seth. Okay, um, I got a layout that I helped build um, down near, near Reedsburg out of here, but you don't know where that's at. But anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably interested in that train stat thing, and um, I, that's going to be something that uh, I'm going to have to learn. Um, it would be awesome on his railroad and figure out how to incorporate that into his uh, operations that he's got down there. Well, you know, so the really cool thing you can do with it, uh, I mean, it, it tells you the state of all the trains that have been run and what's assigned to them and so forth. And actually I got inspired what, uh, dispatching uh, Gary Peterson's layout, which is all Dalen's work and he's here. And uh, uh, Dalen did a, just a superb job of customizing the display to show you for each train, which direction it's going, what uh, stations it works, uh, in a couple of places where there are alternate routes you can take, which routes it takes. So. The benefit there is that, you know, boomer dispatcher, like, you know, me in this case, just right clicks on the train and you can see just exactly what you need to do. And what's so cool about that is in a half hour, you know, everything's a rolling meat because you know what to do. You know where the train's going to work. You know what to expect. And other than that, one weird switch at, where is it, Atlantic Sea, somewhere up at the top left um, where, where there's an interlocking thing about, uh, you know, the, the yard master has to release something to you. I mean, it just sails. And even that's not bad because you need to have the, you know, the semaphores and the computer sense to make sure that you're both not trying to control the same thing. Um, but uh, I don't know, you know, maybe Dalen would 
you know, like to give us a few words because I think he just did a superb job. Yeah, we uh, one of our planned sessions, in fact, is on setting up TrainStat. Um, I haven't done it myself, but in reading the the manual, it sounds like when you start it up, it's reading stuff that you've already done in the rest of CAT. So there really isn't a whole lot to it other than you know making a, a, a network connection to it from another computer, and it's ready to go in its default state. Um, or you can, you know, you can go to local host if you have enough room on your display or two displays and you, you just want to look at it. Yep, if yeah. you got the memory, you got the power. And then Rodney's also going to do one of his other advanced sessions is going to be on customizing tables, which is like customizing the look and feel of displays like that. Yeah, I mean, I again, I was following what Dalen did, and, and it works out, although my layout is pretty linear and fairly simple compared to you know, what Gary's got or John Parker has, you know, where, you know, there's really a lot of stuff going on, but that's really where the thing shines. Cause you can. You're, you can you're really it. talking me up there, Seth. I, I'm going to have a reputation. I don't know if I can live up to. <laughs> um, well, uh, you know, I, I guess I probably, uh, I, I didn't want to step in or anything like that, but if anybody wants me to introduce, I've, I've been on the board, but I was dealing with some things a few weeks ago when they flipped it over to Groups IO, so I I didn't follow that and kind of lost the transition to that. But if anybody wants me to do an intro, I'll do it after you guys get done with the subject or whatnot. Oh, feel free. Go ahead and speak up. We, we um, agreed a couple weeks ago. So I uh, I'm I'm out in uh, we're we're in Salt Lake uh, City, Utah. Uh, Seth's been out. I I know him. I don't know that anybody else has been out there, but if they have. We've had a lot of groups out here. Um, I've got two layouts. Unfortunately, I just transitioned to this computer that I'm on tonight and was going to fire up CATS. I uh, had it on my other computer, and uh, CATS boots up. Uh, I go to lo load the CATS file, and I get uh, I get an error in the console. So I'm not quite certain uh, what's going on there. So, hey, look at Dave. He's ready to speak up. Hey, pardon me? <laughs> well... It's not the same as Seth's. So I get everything to boot up, but then I go to load the actual cat's file, and that fails. So if that's something that I, I know that Seth was having a problem, but it sounded like his was slightly different than mine was. So oh no, mine's down at the JMRI level, and it's not yeah. a cat system. Yours is mine a is fall. Yeah, um, mine will, will just not load the cat's file. So uh, I'm not throw, exactly certain what to do with does that. It throw error messages. Um, it's throwing an error message message in the console, so I can I would be able to upload that to if anybody wants to read it. But do you have the latest version of Cats? Uh, yes, just downloaded it tonight. Because okay. the reason I asked is the last production release of JMRI came. You know, one night I came down and said, "Well, I haven't updated JMRI in a while," so I went and loaded the new JMRI when it came out a few weeks ago, production release, and then I right. went to load Cats crapped out on me exactly where you're saying. And I brought it to Rodney's attention and there was something that changed in JMRI and he had to make a mod to cats, but that version has been out now for a couple weeks. Um, mm -hmm. Other than that, point, it sounds like the same thing. So w w with that being the case, um, I was, I was kind of hoping cause I've got uh, Gary Peterson's uh, layouts got a, a fairly I've got a fairly extensive, uh, you know, I want to uh, thank Seth for his, for his note. Um, I do have two layouts, uh, actually, Gary Peterson and uh, another gentleman by the name of Jim Hepner, uh, both about uh, a little over a mile away from me. Um, both of those gentlemen uh, have cats. Gary's has been in 10 years. I did the install on both of those. They're running CMRI and NCE for the DCC control. And then uh, I, it's not JMRI, but I've also work. I also do a little bit of work um, uh, doing some uh, uh, brain fart, some Visual Basic on uh, Lee Nicholas's uh, UCW. If anybody's familiar with that one, yeah. So um, I'm helping Lee with that one. So I get to kind of dabble in both camps. Um, JMRI, I think, in some regards, uh, it, it 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 has its strong points. And uh, and Visual Basic has its, um, but it's uh, I, I I'm the more I work with it, the more I seem to enjoy JMRI and Cats. It seems to be a good fit. So, um, like I said, unfortunately, I was going to show, but uh, I can't get it to boot tonight. So, so we'll are, to, are is uh, Decoder Pro and Panel Pro both loading okay? 
Yeah, Panel Pro, uh, Decoder Pro mm -hmm. are both loading. I can load because I have a supplemental, uh, a very rather massive uh, supplemental panel file that uh, basically catch communicates with. Um, all of my signal logic is based in JMRI signal masks. Um, I don't have cats do any of that. Uh, it just basically sends requests over and does uh, does all the the logic for signals in uh, signal masks. So this file is quite large. It will large, it will load on its own just fine. Um, you know, under just Panel Pro, um, but the cats file under cats will not load. And what um, it just errors that. What operating system are you on? Mm, Ten. I don't know what it is. I think it's sixty four bit. Okay, it's Windows. Yeah. So, I, I mean, if, 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 if the specifics are there, I can get it. But, you know, right now I've got, um, um, I've got Zoom up, so I'd have to break out from that and I can go find it. But, you know. Understood. So, I'll make but, a note of that and I'll see if I can follow up and get you some info on that. If you want me to, I can just post it up on the, on the yeah. group. But, sure. um, like I said, it's um, otherwise, Seth, Seth's dispatched. I think Seth last did it. Uh, for the Seth, I think you were at the convention last year. You you dispatched Gary's one of the nights, right? Yeah. Okay. So Seth's been on that, and I don't know if anybody else has seen it, but uh, that uh, we've got a, a fairly good one. Uh, we went from a hardwired system back in 2010 and uh, full CMRI implementation, JMRI cats, and it's uh, it's evolved, but it's uh, it's a good system. I I really enjoy it. So. Anyway, that's uh, my little story. I didn't want to take up all the time. <laughs> nope, no problem. That's why we're here. Anybody else? Okay. Um, it, I'm actually fairly new as a user of CATS. Um, mostly, I finally had to break down and, and learn how to use it because I've dispatched the, the Nickel City line over in Virginia once then i'm actually on slate for i think it's next week or something and what i've noticed is when i'm wanting to roll up you know behind a train as it moves along i have to make sure that i don't try to do that until it has gotten past the next signal or i seem to end up getting like orphaned allocated segments so i'm curious what others are doing or looking at or is that just yeah, that's the way it works. So you have to pull past a signal? Well, I have to wait until the train gets past, like, if, if say, I gave them an allocation that got them through three signals. Okay. Uh, um, but because of how the layout is blocked, okay, like there's OS segments and, and that along the way, they're in cat actually as separate segments because of the you know going through turnouts and stuff well if i try to roll up behind somebody it seems that somehow i end up frequently finding i've got something that stays stuck as allocated even after he's moved on past not explaining it very well but it's like there's something about the right way to roll up behind the train and can what you're describing sounds more like an issue with the way they have the sensors put in on the block yeah. um what i've what i found i ran into this is if you have if you have discontinuity between the occupancy and an occupancy cats if like if you, you get one block and then this block over here but the intermediate the center block does not cadence in order cats for some reason gets confused and it will reallocate that block so they tra traditionally i've found that you have to get it from one location to the next location in order and in sequence for that allocation to clear out yeah because the approach that that rodney took with uh this is as it flows through cats when you set up a route and you click on a signal to give that route it knows what direction the, the, the train is going and you've told it based on the train's table, which train is in that block. So what it's really, it's not like it's transponding. It's just that the computer knows or cats knows train X is in this block and it's going to the right. So when the, when the uh, next sensor lights up and says there's the train there, it assumes it's train X 
only by virtue of direction and the fact that you put it there and it follows it only by virtue. It has no way of knowing if that's actually the same train. So if you roll up behind another train and maybe you don't have detection on all your axles of, you know, or enough axles of your train and that middle segment gets unlit, so to speak, you know, it's going to lose track of it. I, don't I could see tell. losing track of the tail of the train. It seems to follow the head of the train very well in moving moving the, the uh, train ID along. That hasn't, I haven't run into any problems with that, except when somebody shorted out and all the blocks went away for a bit and then came back. But um, Do you have enough detection right. wheel sets in the middle of the train? That part, I have no idea. I'd ha I'll have to talk to him because I can't remember if he said yes or no. Yeah, see, it may be losing the middle or back of the train if the head end is moving along properly. Um, I know people that put resistor wheel sets, you know, on every axle. I think that's overkill. Um, I haven't actually done mine yet. I've got the parts. I'm planning to start with just one axle per car and, and see how that works. We, Seth, you're on mute. I can see you talking, but I wasn't hearing you. Um, I was doing something else, and I want to make noise. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I said um, I would strongly recommend one axle per truck, preferably the outboard one, if you can do it. Because what, what tends to happen is you get a caboose, or a couple of cars left out on the main and they roll a little bit. And the next thing you know, you're not seeing it in both blocks. Um, and uh, it happens, you know, you would think that is so random, it couldn't be the problem. But man, it, it just always happens at the wrong time. Yeah. So I would say, uh, you know, maybe start with one axle per car. But frankly, once you got the car up on the bench and, you know, wheels up, I would just do an axle on each truck. I okay. really strong, strongly recommend that. Yeah, the standard we've been going around our local layouts in, oh, in central New York has been using the 1K, uh, or correction, the 10K uh, chip resistors and put one on the leading and trailing axles of a car. That's like you said, outboard. The only time, yeah, the, if, if possible, we've done the outboard. The only time we have it is there's certain brands of cars that the position that you want to put the resistor and typically and the position where I think it's the screw holding the coupler on happen to have an argument. Yeah, or the thing will swivel widely and foul on the coupler box. Um, so, yeah, that can happen. Yeah, good advice. Anyway, you know, just my experience, your mileage may vary. So the one thing I answered for somebody online here the other day, they, they uh, messaged me privately. Uh, they were asking about the Java version and uh, what's required for JMRI. It was interesting because I'm like, I know exactly where it's at. And I went and looked and it wasn't there. So when you go to the JMRI website, you go down to the production version. There's no note right there that says anything nor is it in the release notes, but I noticed on the previous production version, there was a note of what version you needed. And then the, the person asked me, how do you check your Java version? So does anybody need to know that? Or does everybody know that? Well, I'll well I think the Java version is shown on the splash screen, you know, the main, the, the main Jamrai screen. Yeah, but this is like pre-installation. If somebody wants to install Java, uh, it's, it's but for Windows, it's Java space okay. dash version. And it'll show you what version's installed on your, your system. So you can check that you got the right version before you start your install of, of JMRI and go from there. So yeah. Then it's or, Java space. Actually, dash. actually, there is one gotcha on that. Um, I've seen some systems, they will have versions of Java that aren't, I'd use the term fully registered. <laughs> Undocumented. And it's, like I say, they're, they're not in the path variable and, and, and maybe not in the registry quite right. 
But I would also say that if job, you know, doing the Java Dash version doesn't give you a response, you're much more likely to have trouble installing JMRI. Yeah. Or rather, running it once you've installed it. Because JMRI tries not to invoke fancy places to look for those things. It hopes to find it, you know, out in the out in the open, which the command line should find. So I would say, yeah, that is a very good. That's that's really what I'd always suggest to somebody to make sure that your Java is working right. And the other comment I made last week after Rodney's present or during his presentation, um, I don't get fancy when I install things like. Uh, Java and, and JMRI, I don't change the path where I'm putting it. I take the defaults because I know that's where everything's going to look for it by default. We currently aren't having any trouble with cats, and that could very well be uh, because I haven't tried to start up cats in the last five months or so. Um, however, once we get it working, we live in fear that some update is going to sneak in there without our permission and everything is going to go to heck in a handbasket. So we reject any updates of Java, JMRI, or anything else related to cats on that computer. Once it's running, we just try to leave it alone. Yeah, and there's something to be said for that. And Like in my case, I have a dedicated computer just for my railroad stuff. Uh, so I'm not as concerned about having the latest update because I'm not exposed to the internet very much. Um, but the one thing that I, I learned in my, my, I had a previous N scale layout from 2000 to 2008 and I used cats on that and I was constantly running JMRI development versions and I got lucky. It only broke once or twice, but you know, now that I'm, at the point where I want to be running a layout regularly, I stick to production releases of JMRI. And, you know, like I said, I got burned last time because I went ahead and updated the production version here. It didn't work with cats. So I learned check with Rodney first. So, yeah, we also have a dedicated railroad computer. So, um, you know, no need to update anything or do anything weird to it. It's uh, just for the railroad. Operations Pro and CATS for the most part. Yeah, funny thing is, speaking of that, just tonight I see the little icon pop up on my screen saying that, oh, Java's got another update <laughs> as they go from, uh, I think it's 271 to 281. If you're still on the version 8, you know, the, you know, six one sequence. Seven one. Hmm? 61 to 71. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And it's like, oh, gee, what fun. Well, I'm going to try to make a habit of, as new versions come out, posting what, not so much Java because I don't know enough about it to keep up on it. But in terms of, you know, if a new JMRI comes out, you know, be a, a, a crash test dummy and, you know, try it with, with cats and report back if it works or doesn't. and the other thing is Windows updates. You know, you never know when one of those is going to <laughs> Dave, Dave knows all about them. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? background. Yeah. I think we got it. Before everybody got on here, I was talking with Jerry about last week's presentation with Rodney and um, in my humble opinion, as you guys probably will figure out sooner or later, I, I give them freely. Um, there was a lot of techno stuff in there, a lot of sheets, a lot of words that just kind of, it just, a lot of it didn't make any sense. Uh, uh, it would scare the crap out of somebody going, this is way too technical for me. I can't figure this stuff out. And we need to figure out a way that we can, if somebody's got a question on it right now. Dale and? Is somebody in the room? Hold on. I'm delphine from the lab. I'm going to try to draw some blood, okay? Can we? I'm looking for it.
N N Oxnard. There we go. There we go. Very good. Go ahead, Dave. I, I, I wasn't hearing. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> I was talking beginning before everybody was on about last week's presentation and how techno technological it was. And it, it would scare the crap out of a lot of people that are that don't know their way around a computer or they know their way around a computer just enough to be dangerous and that would still scare the crap out of them. Um, it would be nice in our files area, we could, different, different systems require these files to be in these folders. And if somebody could just go, I can't get this thing to work. I've got Windows 8 and I got this. Okay, this is, this is the installation for Windows 8. It's in the files. I mean, or is that too simple? I don't know, you guys gotta tell me. I'm not a, I'm not a computer guy. Actually, uh, that's too complex a problem. There's too many different versions of Windows, too many different versions of Linux. Actually, Linux is more forgiving. But uh, yeah, e even on the Mac OS where you put things changed from one s system OS to another. So what you're proposing is a matrix of about 30 to 40 versions of Windows and Mac and Linux OS. So yeah, you could do that, but it's non-trivial and it'd be almost impossible to maintain. Yeah. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news or the imp of doom, but there it is. <laughs> yeah, the first challenge is getting people that have the various platforms that also have the capability to record a video of it, um, and, and then getting those people to like redo those videos every time a major update comes out, or or maybe you approach it from okay, we're going to do every major update like Windows 10 comes out. You're going to do one video of Windows 10, and if it slightly changes over the life of Windows 10, you know, so be it. That's what happens. Uh, but you probably don't want to go back and do uh, OSs that are no longer supported, like the Windows 7 and stuff like that. I realize a lot of model railroaders are cheap, as we all admit, uh, and there's people still running XP out there, um, but they are no longer supported. The thing I, I thought about uh, his presentation last last time was actually a good part of that. The technology wasn't really of the cats itself, but it was how to make sure you got through all the parts of Java and Jamarai before getting into the actual cats part. Yeah, uh, and and just as a preview of what's to come. Um, in fact, let me. Let me see if I can bring up that list here real quick. Um, the next two presentations are going to be kind of be pre-cats. They're going to be more conceptual of how to design your railroad. Uh, let me get the exact descriptions. And I'm going to, in, in the Groups I.O. page, if you go down the left down to Wiki, there's a Herding Cats Zoom meetings link, and it shows you the scheduled programs, past programs, and future programs. So the next one we have coming up uh, on November 10th really doesn't talk about uh, cats much at all. It's more about block detection, gap placement, uh, turnout control, turnout feedback. It's more conceptual stuff you need to know if you're just building a, the, the railroad to build it in the right way so that you can dispatch it, quite frankly, from any type of system. And then the next one after that, he's going to get into um, uh, talking about signals, you know, what they do, what they show, what input, inputs determine what they show. That one also is kind of generic. Uh, or I should say agnostic to the signal system or uh, the dispatching system. Then the, the big one then that comes after that is going to be, um, and I'll, I'll read his description. Uh, whereas the previous clinics barely mentioned cats, this PowerPoint clinic is on the background behind cats and how to build a panel. It provides the basics of how to use a panel. The presenter will demonstrate how to adjust the size of the display, lay track, define blocks, add turnouts, add signals. This will work up to a simple layout included in the CATS release of a layout Jack Armstrong drew up and show how to dispatch it as a magnet board without a layout connection. We'll demonstrate how CATS uses train stat and can talk to operations, but not in any detail. So 
those are the next two that are coming uh, or three that are coming from Rodney. And as I explained at the beginning, I'm going to be intermixing that with some, what I'm going to call labs where his are PowerPoints. I'm actually going to share my screen, go into cats <clears throat> and we're going to build a layout from scratch. Totally freelance. We're, we're going to just sketch some stuff out and make it work. Um, with, with no plan ahead of time. So it's going to be an interactive thing, open mic. How'd you do that? You know, laying a bunch of track, copying and duplicating it, stuff like that. And we're going to keep building on that project layout. Um, you know, the first time, the first session we'll do like the track layout, passing sidings, uh, multi-track interlocking. We'll talk about the track blocks the block naming, station naming and adding decorations, decorations being like stations and, and signal masks and stuff like that. Then at another lab, <clears throat> we'll actually get into the turnout controls, uh, manual assignment of track status, <coughs> managing trains, placing trains on the track, uh, use of the signal decorations for magnet board dispatching, stuff like that. Um, a further lab will get into turnout feedback, defining signal templates, and configuring the signals themselves. And then uh, wrapping up with managing jobs and crews and doing some fine tuning. Uh, so I got quite a bit laid out. And then, you know, Rodney said about the one, uh, he'll do some advanced ones. He's got one on, uh, <clears throat> let's see, customizing tables, customizing launching. Uh, and, and one that I think is really going to have wide appeal is actually digging down into the signal templates. Um, I know that's an area I haven't delved into yet. Being a Pensy model, or I got to deal with you know the, the position light signals. So I'll be uh, real interested to see how he deals with that. <clears throat> oh, one thing I've I've it's more of what has been forming in my mind from feedback from a lot of users of different things. How many think that it's better to try to make the, you know, the half hour presentation clinic or make a series of five minute or less very focused pieces? The tendency I'm getting feedback says making a whole plethora of very short, very specific parts, preferably ending with a, and this is how you prove you did it right, um, would actually service users a lot more. That's What's everybody think? You just need to have an index so you can find what you're looking for. Yep. But you're right because it comes down to you know you know TLDR too long didn't read. You know, I mean you're trying to solve a problem now. You don't want to watch a half hour video, but five minutes you'll invest, right? Well, I appreciate that feedback. That might be something I need to look at. Um, it may be more conducive to non-interactive though, where it's just staged, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, I mean definitely non-interactive doing something like that where it's effectively, it's, uh, I'm thinking more like a cookbook or, or, or something in that nature. And in some cases, it may be a matter of making edits of the bigger video and chopping it up because the other part you run into is, okay, would somebody who had any of the questions in this video have basically none of those steps already? Or if he's got like half of the steps to plow through the whole video to get the other half that he didn't know, which of course, by Murphy says they won't be sequential um, in the order that he doesn't know them. Uh, the ability to jump into the different spots, it makes me think kind of like the table of contents feature on a PDF. Yeah, bookmarks, yeah. Ken, I think you, I think you bring up something, you know, I, I, I really had a baptism by fire in cats. I mean, I, I took what I knew and what I had read, read through the, you know, the, the, the the manual that Rodney put out, which was good. The the issue that I had was I think tying what was in the manual or in this case what would be in a video to what I knew. What and I'm just taking let's take turnouts for example in cats. Um, 
th there is some stuff that's right there on the front. You see it, you know, there uh, when you go into the turnouts, once you've got a turnout built, but let's assume that we've covered that. The, the aspect of that is that what you see in the front, I think, tells part of the picture. And then there's this nuanced aspect of tying all that information and how that ties into whatever system you're communicating with. And like in my case, I tie a lot of logics back in JMRI to that. So there's, of course, a lot of other things that go on and how that interrelates. And I mean, you could probably break that down into maybe three or four or five minute videos um, just in touching on those. And I think in what you're talking about, the the tiered bookmark or, or so we say subsection or directory structure of like, you know, a PDF or something like that is probably what I think would be best because it can get very, very, very descriptive, but those each individual point should be fairly, you know, should be fairly short. And uh, at some point you're just going to have to assume that somebody's going to be able to kind of tie that in given that you've given them the adequate information. So, so, so would you favor a big interactive video released in a way that we also provided an index and, and provided direct snippets of that? Or would you prefer polished individual videos? I think, I think polished individual videos are probably going to be of more benefit okay. because of the way the program just is structured and, and, and broken into, into individual pieces. They all sort of interrelate, but it's kind of like you really should have your turnouts first before you go throwing, you know, signals all over the layout. So yeah. obviously you'd probably, you know, do tech turnouts first, but before you put turnouts in, you're going to need to have all of your track down and you're probably going to need to have it blocked. Right. Not necessarily, but you know, in those steps. So if you were to break down tracks, okay, tracks in now block, okay, into blocks, how do we define those? You know, what is open and closed? Because in JMRI and CMRI, at least in my, or in CATS and, and CMRI, they reverse their, their logic order, but not to get into that. Um, you know, and just little things to kind of keep in mind in that. And, okay, how do you deal with chains? And, you know, and those types of things. So I think if you were to break those down into incremental small videos and then say, okay, for the next part, go to this video, which is the next in succession, I think that that would probably be fairly beneficial. And the other thing I could do there to facilitate that is, I mean, fairly easy for me to record myself doing stuff. I mean, I use the mm -hmm. word polished and I'm not polished, but uh, right. I could do as many as I can, but even using Zoom, I can have one person on that really knows how to do a certain thing and just record them and make, you know, the five minute videos with other people as well uh, using Zoom. So that would work too. And I, the other thing I was going to say is, and to take a longer video and chop it up is at least a very nice starting point. Um, yes having the individually, you know, focused and, and dressed out is nicer, but just to get a wider variety of things available to the users, uh, it might be quicker at the first cut, you know, slicing something up. Yeah, you could always go back and, you know, and, and do a rehash or, or, or do a, a you know, a, a, an overdue on, the pro the you know the what you already have and just perhaps elaborate on it or something like that but at least you've got the base content there yeah okay that's great feedback so. i think you also want to have some continuity between these chapters so you aren't showing a, a left hand turnout in the first one and then you're showing further how to work on the turnout but it's a right hand turnout but keep some things consistent perhaps even a small uh, layout, an oval with a siding and a couple of yard tracks or something so you can demonstrate all that stuff in the same uh, context. Yeah, so maybe what we do is kind of have a quote-unquote project layout where we're all using the exact same file and just building upon it. Good idea. Does everybody know and I found this out by accident. Does everybody know that on your on your cat's panel, um, you can trace the signal changes? 
Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a bunch of... Not, raise your hand if you understand what I just said. Okay. I, I don't, I don't right. know that I know what you're referring to. Right. See, one of the more complicated things in this program, as far as I was concerned, is trying to figure out the, the, the various uh, signal, um, what they're showing. Because they, they, on the signal template, it has all these letters and numbers and all that stuff. And it's like, what the heck does that mean? Well, you go to your main panel, open up appearance, open up trace items, highlight signal changes, and then go ahead and change some signals on your layout. Then you look at the uh, GMRI uh, system console screen, and it tells you what that signal just did. And if you don't want it to do that, you want it to do something unique, you just change it in the template. At least then you know what all those numbers mean. That doesn't, it's not really mentioned very well in, in the owner's manual. Once I found that, all this stuff made a lot more sense as far as what I was trying to do. I was doing a bunch of stuff with logics and all that. I don't need that. I just go in there and, and uh, it, it tells me what the signal did. I don't want to do that. I want to do something else. And then you go in there and you change the signal template. Yeah, so the one thing that, you know, I started CATS. I mean, Rodney thinks he started around 2004. I think I probably started using it around 2006 on my end scale layout, used it through 2008. Um, I, think I, I think there's been three different iterations of when I've worked with JMRI and CATS. And every time I've gone back to JMRI, there's been a new way to do things. When I first started working with JMRI, it was like impossible to understand how signals worked. And then they had a, you know, the second generation, then they went to do the mass and all this. It keeps evolving. Um, I'm using CATS as a, as a uh, fill-in until I build a US and S panel, uh, which is more error appropriate for what I'm modeling. But, I, and I've said this before, so I don't mean to be repetitious, people have heard it, I think I'm going to allow my tower operator to pick if they want a, a, a 1950s US and S panel or just use CAD because it really doesn't matter. Once it's programmed, you can launch either one, it'll work fine. Um, but the way you had to put together the original panel pro panels was a hell of a lot more <clears throat> difficult than it became, say, two or three years ago. And now I haven't worked on that in quite a while. And now there's actually you know, a menu item for US and S panels. I don't know what it does, but it's like this thing keeps evolving and there's not a real good end user um, announcement of, a, okay, here's the better way. They just leave all, all the methods are in there for perpetuity for backward compatibility. But as a new user launching JMRI, you're like, which one do I use? You don't know. Go ahead, um, you know, I, I, I'm, again, I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't want to over toot my horn here or, you know, or say anything, or, you know, going into impropriety. Um, but about three and a half years ago, kind of what Dave talked about, um, I was just running into some, uh, we were running into some, uh, headaches with, uh, a couple of signals and we've, we kind of, drilled down and I'd kind of determined that some of the problems were uh, we had some routes set. Uh, somebody would be authorized to take a, a local control and maybe the steps didn't happen quite right. And uh, for whatever reason, um, cats would somehow get stuck to where at that point until we had shut it down and started it back up, uh, the best that it would show was a medium, uh, medium speed. And I couldn't get it to go any higher, so it wouldn't go to clear anymore. So even for a straight route that five minutes ago it was showing, say, a high green over red, now it was a uh, low yellow or a uh, high red over low yellow. So it was kind of that impetus that made me take the the panel that I had been working on, Gary Peterson's, and I, uh, while we were still running on the old CATS panel, I went and completely rebuilt the entire thing. And it was from that point, you know, speaking more to Dave's uh, question, um, that I vested all of the signal logic uh, essentially over into JMRI and CATS now simply, it's either red or green and that green is simply a flag that gets sent to JMRI. JMRI interprets that, removes the held 
And then when Cap sees the occupancy, it knocks that uh, back to red, which that flag then interprets as a red or as a held and the signal goes back. And so JMRI is taking care of all that. And one of the other advantages was that I could very quickly with a, a variable within JMRI, just a, a simple like a little panel switch, change it from CTC to ABS and the whole layout could run automatic. So when our crew started dwindling out and guys just wanted to do it, now they just picked up the throttle, dialed up the thr the the turnout number they wanted and can throw it and the dispatcher could come down and, you know, and visit in person. So that was one take I got in it. So, you know, there is that option. I don't want to take that away from Rodney, but that was the direction I went plus some other, some other aspects. So that is, uh, that is a possibility. So. That, that's a popular option. A lot of people like that. They, they like to switch to ABS for open houses. Yeah. yeah. Cause if, you, if you've got a cat's panel, <laughs> that is an ABS, you can't quickly change that over without shutting it down, starting the file up. Now I can do this on the fly back and forth. Right. And using some routes, I simply just go in and change some variables that just change and set between those two. And it's all happening in the back. It takes about 15 seconds to make sure that things cadence correctly. Right. But that was one of the advantages that I got out of that. And so, yeah, that is a really popular thing. And, and my friend really likes that because when he's on his own, he doesn't have to play with the computer anymore. So, well, and, and and when you have an open house, guests love to see the signals change. So, you, as an owner, you don't need to worry about. It. I mean, I I have a, a four track main and then a, a one track um, secondary line that that has a, a hidden connection, so it can run as a loop. I've had yeah. open houses where I've had five trains running by myself and not an issue. Yeah, we've we've done that too, and and that's the beauty of of uh, JMRI and it it signal aspects. Uh, I, there was a few aspects that I couldn't get with with cats that I wanted. Um, they were rare, um, but I wanted a couple. And we had one signal aspect that isn't a hundred percent prototypical, but it was one that made sense for our our crew. And uh, getting that one in in cats was was just not going to happen so that was another reason i i went over to that so you know it's 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 what everybody likes i think don't get don't get confused that's that's considerably more advanced i think for what we're talking about but you know it is the direction i ultimately took and i um but cat still does a you know an excellent job at what it does yeah well i, I hope you make it to uh rodney's presentation when he does that higher level aspects clinic because i think that's going to be good for a lot of people yeah, it will. Anybody can get anything out of it. I, I still intend on doing it. I've, you know, now I've, I've been uh, doing cats now. Um, uh, essentially, I've been doing cats for 11 years now. So I'm still thinking I can learn something. So. Anybody else? I just want to say, Mr. Duncan, I love your little shoulder pad there. That's kind of cute. <laughs> Our mascot. <laughs> all right. If that's it, I'll wrap this session up. I really appreciate the feedback about maybe doing these, these mini sessions. Uh, I'll take at the heart and uh, maybe do a couple and get some feedback on it. Appreciate you all joining. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Stay Thank out you, there, Jerry. Man.